Hi, my name is Zach Hale, and today I'm going to be showing you a new program that I just found about uh, called Ionix, uh, inspired by Ionis Anakis, and I guess a lot of his work that he did uh, creating the UPIC. So the software was created, um, I think, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe check on the website. But uh, it's pretty cool. So what you can do is essentially draw... Uh, figures and stuff. Uh, this is two-dimensional, but they're actually three-dimensional figures that you see like this. Um, so these figures are kind of act as uh, trajectories so that these little cursors uh, will follow all of these trajectories uh, through here in 3D space. And so you can send uh, those coordinates of where those are uh, through OSC or uh, whatever you like. So we can just uh, go through here real quick and I'll show you what it is. So if we uh, click on that, uh, you can see it opens up. Uh, and here's all the different um, kinds of messages it's going to send. So I'm doing OSC, but you could do MIDI or Serial, even some HTTP stuff uh, for web design or interactive web stuff. Um, I do have to say the one thing that I found, because I'm interfacing this with Super Collider right now, and a lot of people have done it with Max and Pure Data uh, and processing as well, but I didn't see a lot of people doing it with Super Collider, so that's why I wanted to make this video A, and uh, B, just to show you some of the things that I found out recently about it. Um, so usually your port is actually going to be um, 57120, so that's the OSC port. So uh, I also picked my uh, my own computer, so that's my IP address, uh, but if you were doing like a LAN network or something like that and you wanted other people to be controlling things, you know, obviously we change that. Um, and as you can see, the address is always going to reflect what you're editing. So backslash cursor is for all cursors address. And then there's one for the triggers, which are these, and I'll get to those later. Uh, but the thing with Super Collider is that usually you're supposed to use this port to go out and this port to go in of Ionix. Uh, but for some reason, I guess that when you boot this, it kind of locks that port. And then when you try to open it in Super Collider, it gives you this error uh, to try to do that. So what I did otherwise, um, the port, if you actually type this in Super Collider, uh, line port, you see you get 57120. And if you try to open... Uh, Two zero, or sorry, that's two one. If you try to open two zero, it's going to give you an error message. So what I did was, uh, you can't type. You can't actually type in here. So I just typed in here that address instead of what it had for me here. Um, so, anyways, that's how you send messages, and then uh, these triggers are the same kind of thing. Uh, if you go here, go to messages. Uh, same thing as before, only it's now trigger. And so what it's going to do is send a array of values. And so here's all the values that you can pick for it to send. Um, and I haven't tried this yet, but I think you can make it pick I mean, whatever you want to. Uh, that was a mistake to do that. So let's see, Z mapped. Um, Z mapped. There we go. Um, so anyways, maybe this will make more sense when you see it in Super Collider. Um, so anyways, what you what you do then, so so you can see it, uh, you just hit play and it'll autonomously kind of go through these trajectories. Uh, and you can see it in 3D. So whenever these cursors hit these, you'll see that they turn red, and that means that they're being triggered and sending their message. Um, and then also, <clears throat> we can change the speed of this right here to make it go faster, or go really slow, or go backwards. Um, so anyways, how you do this in Super Collider uh, is you have to use a OSC func, or OSC function, um, and then if you look back here in the messages, uh, the first value is always going to be the, the ID of the thing that's triggering it. Um, so if we're looking here, uh, this one I'm using for the triggers. Um, so I'll just play a little sound, what it sounds like. Um, 
So that's the basic sound. Um, so what it's saying is whenever the ID trigger uh, 6, so we can find uh, where 6 is, is here. So it's whenever the cursor hits that one specifically, it's going to trigger that synth I just played for you at frequency 300. And then uh, part of the OSC font thing is you have to put the address at the end. Um, so that's all of those. So actually, I could just play this like that, so I can play these for you. So there's there's more triggers on here because I haven't labeled all of them yet. But anyways, you'll get the point. Uh, let's do that and we'll play it. And maybe let's make it go a little faster so you can hear them. So anyway, that's the triggers uh, I was talking about. And, um, so here's two other things. So I have two cursors on this uh, object right here, this geograph, um, geometrical figure, sorry. Um, and then this cursor over here is uh, two, so that's on a different one. Um, so for uh, these two, I'm having it just be this kind of FM or AM modulated kind of thing and then the other one's just a density um, just noise thing but, but I'm playing with the density with the different uh, things so when it sends you when it sends a um, uh, the array over an OSC um, I found out that of course one like I said is always the ID and then uh, three four and five are the mapped uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates going from zero to one. So um, I think you can do it otherwise where it's like an absolute value. Maybe, maybe if you make the, the thing larger and there's, I mean, there's the origin point right here. Uh, if you can see that line. So maybe the farther away from that it gets, it changes. But I'm doing the mapped one. That's from zero to one. Um, so that's always going to be how that goes. Uh, and then I'm just, you know, setting. So X is my synth long here, and I'm setting the volume uh, to whatever that is, uh, message 4 is, which is going to be the Y coordinate. And then the X coordinate is going to ch uh, change the frequency of my amplitude mod or my pitch modulation. Sorry. So that is FM synthesis from earlier. I said AM. It's FM. Um, and then my 5 is going to be the actual pitch of my uh, my synth is being modulated. Um, so it's the same thing with B and then this one uh, down here the density is the Z coordinate so how, how dense it is. Uh, the panning uh, I'm having controlled by the Y coordinate and then the X coordinate is controlling a Moog filter uh, over here. So anyways um, Let's see if there's anything else I can tell you. Um, the other thing uh, that's cool too, you can send messages back in to Ionix uh, through OSC. So you kind of do it like that. You have to set up this network address. And so that's, again, my host, which is my computer. And then this is the port 1234, which if you remember, uh, we saw over here. If we go uh, to the cursor messages you'll see that the input port okay, the basic input port is one two three four so um, so you can what I was saying is you can control um, ionics from here so if you want to make a GUI and super clutter uh, that would control a bunch of other things for a live performance but you wanted to have maybe your program uh, on a different screen and you can full size it and make it kind of presentable to the public as a um, a visual context to your piece, uh, you could do that and then control everything about it through here as well. So I can make it play. Um, so it's not playing now. I go here. So now it'll play. Uh, I can do the speed. So it's at two. I can go to twenty. So I go in really fast. And then I can make it go super super slow like that. Um, and then also, if you 
I didn't figure this out exactly, but you can, if it's not playing, you can control where certain curses are on their trajectories. So uh, this is pretty cool because if you wanted to hook up, say, like a gestural controller or something like that, you could control each one of these cursors on their path based on the controller value that you were giving it. Um, so that's something I'll look into later. And then also you can control the screen. Uh, so this is nice because if you wanted in certain parts of the piece for the view to change, if you were publicly showing it, um, you could do that. So as you can see, it kind of went there. And then um, maybe we'll pull this down so you can see it. Let's say if we go to 10, 10, we'll do that. And then we'll go back to regular origin. Like that. It's cool. So I'll just play uh, some of this stuff for you so you can see it. Um, Yeah, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. If you select a certain cursor, um, so let's say we select this one, you can go in here, which I wasn't doing, but you can make the cursor speeds all different too. So they don't have to be going at the same speed. Maybe this one should be, uh, shoot, let's go six, uh, and then let's make this one go really slow, and then that one will be normal. So if we play it now, So you can get these different kinds of things too. Um, so I won't play that anymore, but it's nice. This is a simple example, but hopefully it makes sense and it will help you out. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And I look forward to making more things with this. Thanks.